please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome back. Uh, counting down to pre-open. Uh, for now, uh, things are looking quite okay. The SGX Nifty uh, up about 23 points. Uh, uh, Mr. Silsian, uh, let's uh, revisit that uh, PSU bank story. Uh, uh, you know, specifically on, on Bank of Baroda, I heard you say yesterday, of course, that, uh, you know, that this is perhaps the best time to buy. But uh, from the near-term point of view, you reckon there could be some more pain in the stock? Anuj, I don't think so, because if you really see the situation, probably there is a lot of confusion seen prevailing more in case of Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank. In fact, yesterday also I have said that, and in fact this confusion is persisting maybe because of the swap ratio being not announced. Because if you see yesterday, maybe the, uh, the, the Vijaya Bank was quoting exactly at around 50% on the premise that 2 to 1, 2 shares of, of Vijaya Bank will get 1 share of Bank of Baroda. But if you have the non-FNO and FNO stocks, you know, getting much, I'm just going into the technicality, not detailing them. So the Vijaya Bank should, if I, if, I, if I presume that, you know, for the, for the purpose of just calculation, because you need to have some presumption as well to take a call on the valuation call on the stock. So in that case, the Vijaya Bank should rule at, a, at about maybe 46-47% of the price of Bank of Baroda. And in my view, Dena Bank should not rule more than 14-15% of the price of Bank of Baroda. Because lot of uh, provisions, you know, while taking a swap ratio call, the Dena Bank will valuation will be trimmed going will valuation will be trimmed going forward. And in fact, we are seeing frenzy. Dena Bank frozen at upper circuit. So yesterday I have said that exit from Dena Bank, remain away from Vijaya Bank because I don't think any uh, you can just hold neither buy nor sell. But that will be seen quite positive for Bank of Baroda going forward because I think that the valuations have already seen or the negatives have already been seen having factored in into the valuation. And I don't see any problem going forward from here on on, the, on, on, on this on this merger in respect to the valuation uh, call being taken on Bank of Baroda. Okay, 72.71 on the rupee is a very good opening considering that we went to 72.97. So it's possible that that minor dip in crude prices is helping or uh, Reserve Bank is already there uh, in uh, you know, morning trades. But this is uh, a, at least a very positive surprise for the equity markets, which would have been prepared, preparing to see that uh, 73 number. It, 73 is just a few pies more than 72.71, but it has a psychological impact when you have a number like that. Uh, that's been saved for now. Let's see how things uh, proceed. Uh, if there isn't a global uh, uh, rush to, you know, uh, cut down uh, emerging market currencies, we should be able to coast through. Okay, well, in terms of individual stocks, I mean, you'd want to wait for these uh, headline rates to settle, which are indicating a green tick. But Titan could be under some pressure. It's actually the top nifty loser right now, down about 2.5%. CLSA has downgraded the stock, and there are fears of that import duty on gold that's really dragging down this space. Uh, a couple of these banks that saw big delivery base selling yesterday, Indusind Bank, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank, etc., are under pressure. Yes, Bank is also a tad bit in the red. But we'll wait for these rates to settle. In the meantime, uh, Mr. Tulsian, I just uh, wanted uh, to bring your attention to some of these, uh, you know, consumer durable stocks. Um, uh, uh, some consumer surveys are indicating that this festive season could be hit very bad, and um, almost 40% households are cutting down on discretionary spending. How would you approach names like, say, Whirlpool, uh, Hitachi Home, etc. See, Sonia, I don't think that that situation is really seen panning out because if, uh, ahead of the festive season and post this Kharif crop, because Kharif production is going to be seen as, as at, at, at a record level. And I don't see any, uh, I don't see in, uh, no reason for the for the cut in the discretionary spend also. So keeping a positive view, in fact, you know, we, we in fact try to correlate sometimes with the stock prices also. When the uh, when the uh, uh, Hevels kind of stocks were ruling at 700 plus, we were all a gung-ho and positive on the discretionary spend maybe about a couple of weeks back and today the situation is seen to be negative. But things are not seen to be as bad as on the ground. On the contrary, rural spending is seen to be a big kicker for this uh, consumer durable stock and maybe for the, and in fact, if you go and continue in the same space, there are many ideas, you know, seen quite, quite, quite attractive available in this space. Maybe like Whirlpool, Crompton, Greaves Consumer, Electrical, Voltas. Uh, uh, maybe, you know, sir, I, I may say that Hevels still is looking a little expensive, but maybe even that seemed to have bottomed out. So we are keeping 
positive on the stocks after this uh, sector seen having uh, go, went through the correction in this last two three weeks. Well, I don't know where this report is coming from because you know, it, uh, on the ground there is a. Uh, most primarily, that's what uh, we see. Uh, you know, the, you go to any mall. So local circle uh, pool. I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 it looks far removed from reality. But uh, whatever it's worth, uh, uh, let's look at some of the Island FS Group stocks. ITNL is up 20% right now. Uh, and there are a couple of other Island FS Group stocks also looking quite interesting. The interpretation could be NHAI has made the repayment. Mm. So is it that the government now realizes that this is a huge problem which is not getting the attention it deserves? It's exactly. a 90,000 crore loan of which about probably 50, 60,000 crore is to banks and the mm. remaining are EPFO, about yes. 8,000 crore. And, uh, you know, a whole host of others, mutual yeah. funds, mutual uh, funds also uh, HNIs yeah, exactly. and all of them. So, you yes. know, mutual funds are all widely held. Yeah. So there would be a pain point over there and perhaps, uh, uh, you know, the NHAI repayment also is because the government has put its head together, mm. uh, put heads together and uh, decided that uh, this uh, problem needs to be resolved. Yeah. Uh, in any case, uh, one doesn't know if this outsized reaction will continue. It's only really the first positive step. Exactly. Let's take Mr. Tulsan's thoughts as well on this issue. Mr. Tulsan, your, your thoughts? See, Anuj, in fact, if you see the structuring of ITNL, that is ILFS Road Transport Network, in fact, that company was seen quite fragile and quite, you know, unhealthy from the day one. I, I remember, you know, at, the, at that time, you know, in fact, we have always given caution. But when it used to rule from at, at maybe at level of about 150, about two, three years back, fell to 100, fell to 80, you know, in fact, the kind of uh, business model was not seen sustainable. But yes, having corrected to the level of over 2025, the situation is not going to be as bad because the companies into the road assets network and once they start getting there some kind of, you know, repayment, whether coming in from the uh, from the from the government or uh, from the from the other agencies, things will improve. But again, you know, there is no point in taking any of the call in the ILFS shares, whether it is ILFS investment manager or it is IT and uh, ILFS road ne transport network. Okay, uh, let's pay attention to the rupee because uh, today the opening is extremely positive uh, after days, uh, several consecutive days of the currency falling. And now the year-to-date fall yesterday was uh, about almost 15%. Ray Farris, Head Fixed Income Research and Economics at uh, Asia Pacific at Credit Suisse joins us on the phone line. Uh, good morning, Ray. Thank you very much for uh, taking this call. Well, we have seen uh, the rupee fall along with emerging market currencies. On a year-to-date basis uh, in Asia, it looks quite bad. Uh, has it fallen enough for uh, uh, the ongoing uh, emerging market turmoil to be factored in? Uh, well, I mean, I, th I think a lot of that's going to depend on how this uh, trade war with China, this U.S.-China trade war, plays out, as well um, what happens with oil prices going further. Um, so right now we have a very sort of unfortunate mix of the U.S.-China trade war escalating and potentially escalating further as uh, President Trump uh, announced overnight that the Chinese retaliation to the new U.S. tariffs may incur further tariffs from the U.S. Uh, and oil prices, as I'm sure you know, have pushed higher even as global metals prices have fallen. Um, and and that, that sort of implies weaker Asian export growth, but a higher Asian and Indian oil import bill. Uh, so right now, the, the pressure is still very much on uh, dollar India to rise. I would add that I think markets are disappointed by the fact that the government suggested uh, last, late last week that it might take specific policy action to stem pressure on the rupee. But then, uh, yeah, as the weekend passed, uh, we didn't really get anything that was particularly concrete. Um, and I think that's disappointed mm -hmm. markets, and that's some degree of concern that uh, election concerns uh, limit the government's willingness to take action to uh, manage the currency. Mm. Uh, Ray, hi, good morning. That was my next question. Do you expect the finance ministry or the RBI to come out with additional steps to support the rupee uh, over the next few weeks? And if yes, what could those steps be? Well, the, I think two things are likely. The first is that the RBI, I think, is likely to raise its policy rate again. Yes, inflation at the headline level has fallen, but core inflation, which has also come down, is still high, and I estimate it to be well above the RBI's uh, target. Um, the depreciation of the currency it poses a credibility threat as well, and so the right thing to do is probably to increase rates again. The second thing that 
may come out. The government has talked about uh, increasing tariffs on selected kind of luxury goods. One would imagine that they would uh, increase tariffs, as they've done in the past, on gold and jewelry, uh, possibly some other luxury goods. Uh, the bigger question is whether the government would be willing to do some sort of new external borrowing, another FCNR, um, or, or some other measures such as that to you know, raise capital inflows. As it stands right now, mm -hmm. uh, India is continuing to see foreign capital outflows, both from equities and bonds. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, yeah, we have been seeing cap foreign capital outflows for the last 18 months, I would think. Uh, but uh, uh, the reserves are also as good as about uh, over $400 billion. Uh, Ray, you know, at what point will you start buying India, for instance? I mean, rupee at 73, yields at 8.2%, uh, uh, stock markets down about 5% uh, from their recent highs. Things are, Indian securities are a lot cheaper, whether you look at a share like TCS or you look at a 10-year uh, Government of India bond. At what point does the combo become attractive for you? Well, I don't want to make any particular statements about the attractiveness or the valuation of the underlying asset markets. I mean, you know, what I would note is that real yields are not quite as high as they appear to be because the headline, the fall in headline inflation had a lot to do with food. Um, some of that's going to reverse in October because of minimum support prices. And as I said earlier, core inflation is running just below 5%. So real yields are not quite as high as the nominal yield suggests. Um, from a currency valuation perspective, I think what's key here is the current account balance is continuing to widen out and the deficit. And if I look at the currency on a real effective exchange rate basis, it hasn't really fallen much. The Indonesian rupiah, for example, has fallen much more on a trade-weighted inflation-adjusted basis than the uh, Indian rupee. And that's, that's in part because Indian inflation is still fairly high. So from a pure currency valuation perspective, um, and crossing that over into the current account balance, especially where oil prices are, it, it's not clear that the currency is uh, particularly cheap. It's not clear that it's very expensive, but it's not clear that it's obviously cheap. Okay. All right. Ray Ferris, okay. thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, that's the view on currency, of course. Uh, the pre-opening has ended, and it's ended uh, quite okay. 47 points higher is what you have on the Nifty, about half a percent. The bank nifty opening 90 points higher, slightly underperforming the, the nifty. And of course, uh, mid cap starting well, three to one on advanced decline. Now, Ashwani, if we do open here, is there a trade? Well, not buying for sure, but uh, let's see. Let the market pull back a little bit. And then maybe uh, you know, post afternoon, uh, we can look for weakness and what happens later on. But uh, any sort of uh, uh, Pullback should be used to sell for the moment. And uh, LIC housing is a sell with a stop of 472, target of 450. Okay. Well, we just have a few more minutes. Uh, Mr. Tulsian, uh, thank you very much for joining us and staying with us through the pre-market. Uh, uh, just a few more technical questions to our technical experts. Uh, but before that, Manisha Gupta is here. Uh, Manisha, of course, uh, we heard you out on sugar, but how are the commodity markets panning out? Well, uh, if you look at the metals, they are trading on the positive. So whether it's precious metals or base metals, they have opened Asia on a firmer note. Some pressure, of course, continues in for the crude oil prices, contradicting fundamentals at its best. On one side, of course, you have the U.S. and China trade war uh, escalating. And you also are looking at the U.S. weekly inventories, perhaps build up by 1.29 million barrels. So that is something that will keep the crude prices in check. But on the other side, with the Saudi Arabia saying that they are comfortable at $80 and plus for Brent is something that has been supportive. It also has to do with the Iran sanctions where we have seen the uh, more exports going offline and then of course it is the OPEC and the allies meeting on this Sunday where they would be discussing for the fundamentals this actually is a prerequisite to the final meeting in December so ahead of that there would be some statements coming out on Sunday that would set course on where the crude prices are headed for the next week and the near term so that is something that continues to support prices in Asia right now Hey, thanks a lot for that. Well, we have two more minutes to go before the market opens. Sun Pharma is actually the big mover in uh, the Nifty on the back of the dermatology medicine getting an approval in Europe. It's up about 1.5% now. So, Darshan, um, this space is something that you've liked for a while. If someone missed out on this uh, rally or didn't pay any heed to your advice, you think it's still not too late to get into names like this? 
It's very early. Uh, please enter pharma in sure. any way. Buy a mutual fund. There are sector pharma funds. Buy a collection of Cipla, Dr. Eddy, Oro Pharma and Sun Pharma. Enter now. It's just the beginning. And is there a nifty trade for you now if it opens uh, a third of a percent higher? Yes. Uh, wait for 10 minutes. I mean, uh, that's the cooling off period. But mm. then I would buy the Nifty if it holds above 11,300. I would be a buyer. Okay. At the moment, it looks uh, that it would uh, do so. Uh, Mitesh, uh, anything that you would trade now after you see the pre-market trades? <coughs> See, I think uh, pharma is a space which I like. So, Biocon and Sun Pharma both are my favorites. I'll see how Sun Pharma intraday charts shape up after the opening, but Biocon would be an immediate buy as well. Okay. Uh, Ashwini, uh, are there any other shorts, uh, especially in the finance space now? Because finance is the one that's rising at the moment. See, everything in financials, including NBFC, you know, PSU banks, they will face selling at higher levels. And what has changed? Rupees at 72.80. Uh, you know, crude is at 79. So, uh, any sort of uh, mild pullback will easily get sold into. Okay. But yesterday, you had, of course, uh, the move in uh, some of the FMCG names. So, uh, that space is interesting. HDFC AMC, by the way, is opening 4% lower in pre opening. Uh, and what's interesting is Reliance Capital is also down 3%, though now you have uh, the mutual fund arm listed separately, the Reliance Nippon asset management company that uh, stock also is now listed so that one also would be in focus so these are a couple of names you should sir. look at icsi securities baby i mean uh, i would assume that if the amcs make less they mm. will pass on less commission mm. uh, so the clsa view is that uh, companies like icsi securities okay minor, minor down tick yeah. let's see the reliance nippon uh, amc uh, as well that also would be uh, uh, a stock to track along with hdfc amc mm. so these would be some names Okay, well, that, 